Hey crafters, welcome to another episode of Spellcraft. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought I'd do one about uh, spell templates. Uh, um, this one I'm going to show a persistent template that stays on the uh, tile and the enemy or uh, well the enemy can move it around uh, on the tile but you could use the same technique to do any shape template any size uh, from anything from a flash bang like a uh, like a fireball to um, a cone type attack uh, you could also um, do like I did with a persistent template and the thing I like about uh, doing this stuff is you know, uh, the games with the grid, uh, the grid, the games with the grid have the, you know, the crazy shape templates or the square template or whatever, you know, the fireball that's shaped all crazy and all this. No, 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 no. You just make it a circle. That's it. You just make it. If it's a, if it's a burst explosion, you make it a circle. If it's a cone, you make it a cone. It's not, it's not that hard. So, uh, I'm going to show how I did, uh, the circular template and use it in play. And so uh, let's go to the table and we'll start crafting that. So I'm going to use this old um, uh, cardstock box uh, that had envelopes in it for my, to start my project. So I'm just going to rip it apart to make it easy. So, all right, so I've got some cardstock here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, for my template, I'm just going to use a um, CD. And I'll measure that out. I'm going to use a uh, Sharpie. Trace around it. So there we go. I got my perfect circle. So now I'm going to cut that out. If you are doing this um, for a particular spell effect, I've decided the size I wanted this spell effect. So uh, I decided that the, uh, the CD was a good size for it. Uh, if you had a particular spell effect that you wanted a certain uh, uh, diameter, um, you could use uh, the compass to draw that and get the exact measurement. But I decided this is just this is the size I want. So, okay. Now in, in play, I'm not just going to use this to measure out uh, the. Uh, effect area. I'm going to leave this in play. It's going to be like a field of negative energy that um, uh, can hinder the players and hurt them. So uh, I want to make this look as cool as possible. So um, I'm going to move on to the next step, um, which will be using the glue gun. Okay, so I'm going to use my mini glue gun and I'm going to do some detail on it, kind of like I did the gate. So. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to start from the edge and kind of All right. So now I've got some interesting pattern going on there. And what I'll do is I'm going to paint this black and then we'll uh, fill in the details. Now you'll often notice when you do this kind of work that um, you can get some stringing um, from the glue gun. Uh, it tends to do that. If you're covering up the glue, it's not a big deal, but when you're doing something like this where you want the glue to be like a, a relief on the uh, project, it can be a problem. So what I like to do is wait a few minutes until the project dries, and then just you can just kind of rub your hand over it and get those strings off. Um, you want to get as many off as you can before you paint it. I want to talk about that before we did the the black base paint there. Okay, so I think we have all the strings off and it's pretty easy. Uh, the strings um, are that rubbery texture so they're pretty easy to, to, to pull off if you just rub, rub your hand over the texture. And uh, there we go, now we're all set and we'll paint that black.
So here's my template. Uh, it's been spray painted black, but I want to give it a little bit of a sheen. So I'm going to use a, it's actually metallic black. So I'm going to put that on there first. And I'm going to do it very wet because that's how I'm going to do the other colors. So that's why I'm using the styrofoam plate because I'm going to have a really wet application here. Okay, so I've got my uh, wet application there. You really, you can just see the glistening of the water. But it'll have a little bit of a sheen uh, when it dries from, there's little teeny bits of metallic in this metallic black. So now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a couple colors of purple. Um, this one's a strange color. It's a, du it's a, pur it's a purple uh, dust. And this one is uh, just a very dark uh, royal purple. So I'm gonna use those two. My intention is to keep this very dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my brush again, and it's still pretty wet, and I'm gonna, I haven't added any water though, and I'm gonna dip my brush in it, kinda of stipple it in there, and then I'm gonna kinda of stipple some areas on the black. So it's not just pure black. And I'll kinda of do the edge there. And now I'm gonna do the dusty purple. It's a very strange color. So with this wet, this very wet black, it's almost dissolving into the, into the black. So it's doing a strange kind of blend. I'm gonna do some more royal purple. All right, Let's see if I can show you that. Uh, I know that's very dark, so it's hard to see. But the color, when this, it's even more pronounced now, but when the color effect dries, it's gonna be even harder to see but it'll be just enough of a variance to make it not just a straight black. So it'll make it a little more interesting. So now I'm gonna let this dry and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. So now that my uh, spell effect uh, circle is dried, the effect is a little less uh, pronounced than I actually wanted. So um, I'm gonna apply some more purple with the template dry. Uh, sometimes this will happen. Sometimes you'll try an effect and uh, it's a good lesson. Sometimes you'll try an effect and it didn't quite come out how you wanted it, but it's just paint. You can just paint right over it. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use my bigger brush again and pick up some of that darker purple. And I'm just kinda kinda splock it on there. Or uh, I should say uh, dab it on there. And I'm actually going to do the, I think the edges a little bit. So I'll pick that sucker up. Okay. So you can see I got a little more on there. Now I'm going to use that weird dusty purple. And that's like a lighter purple. But it's not too happy, that's what I like about it. It's kind of a reddish purple. kind of lightly hit it. I do a little more towards the center, I think. But I'll put a few on the out, out there. All right, I think I'm happy with that now. So that's hard to see because it's wet and it's black. But uh, we'll let that dry and then we'll uh, move to the next step. But like I said, um, you may try something and it just may not quite have come out how you wanted it. I wanted the purple to be a little more prominent, 
So I decided that after it dried, I was going to add a little more, a little more purple. And always remember that the paint will um, be darker, generally darker, when it dries. It'll look lighter when you initially put it on, when it's still wet, but it'll dry up a little darker. So always keep that in mind. So here we go. I have my room set up, and I have my uh, three heroes here and the enemy uh, caster. So it turns out the enemy caster goes first, and he has range. So what he would do is, I could just take the template that I used, it's the negative energy template, and he it actually covers all three heroes. So I just pick them up, put them underneath. So they're all inside the negative energy. So then you roll to hit for each one. Um, in this case, it's a willpower attack. So you roll to hit for each one, and depending if you hit, you take damage. Uh, but there's another secondary effect um, where um, the player, it's, it's almost complete blackness, so the player is essentially blind, so they might get confused which direction they're going. So I, what I do is I have them make an intelligence check, um, and if they make it, they can, they can exit the sphere where they want to. Uh, if they don't, they'll exit the sphere at a random point. So um, what I have for that is I have a, uh, it's called a scatter die. It's uh, used a lot in war games uh, to show a random direction. And you can buy those uh, for most uh, dice shops and that kind of thing. Um, or you could just have a, uh, a card with a circle on it and, you know, label each direction one, two, three, you know, or eight or whatever, different, eight different directions or 12 or however many you want to put. And then that template would determine, roll the die, and that template would determine where they exited, uh, what direction they exited from the uh, sphere. Now, in this case, uh, this kind of thing is nice because the sphere continues to stay in effect. Now, there are certain things like an ice storm um, that may um, land in a certain spot and then just continue to be um, difficult terrain. Uh, and beads can work good for that because... It's in one spot, it doesn't move. But with, for this thing, it can actually move around. So if the, if the mage spends, or if the enemy spends a uh, movement action, he can actually move it a certain amount. So um, it's nice to have these kind of templates for that effect so that they can move it around. It's a real pain in the butt trying to, you know, if you make a circle of beads here, you know, that's great, but then it's a real pain in the butt when you gotta try to move that circle of beads around. Um, so you have that. So it's much easier to have a template like this and then, um, and then uh, you know, then, then move the template around. Also, uh, you could do things for templates like this that weren't on the board. So say, you know, I had our characters here and you measured out a template for a fireball, okay? And he casts a fireball and you can say, oh yeah, they're all hit. And you could do it like a fiery, make it look like fire, like it exploded. So you give it to the, you give it to the player character and they have it so they can measure out their explosion radius um, and one thing in a gridless game, it's nice because um, in a gridded game, it's kind of like the squares are kind of like this, so you don't hit the people in the corners. But with a, with, a, with a true circle, you're actually hitting all these points in the circle. So people who, you know, p your players who might whine and say, oh, I got grid, I don't know. Well, they're actually going to hit more targets if you, do a, if you do a true circle than if you're doing the partial circle that they do with a grid. So it's in the favor of the spellcaster to actually do a circle, so that's just, I had to put my little gridless thing in there. But anyways, so this is, this is a, the game templates, and you, like I said, you can make them any size. You can make cone-shaped, um, and, you know, or round-shaped, or what, and whatever size you want. It's just cut out of cardstock, um, and they're perfect for leaving on the board, or if, if, he, if the maid moves it around, I can put it at different spots. You just have to pick up the figures and put them on top of it, um, so there, you know, it is a little bit of, uh, and if you have more terrain in the game, you may have to do that also. But um, uh, for this particular encounter I'm designing this for, I didn't really have much in the, in the room anyway, so it's not gonna be a problem, but um, some encounters may be a little more of a problem. So you could just set it on top of stuff if you needed to or whatever, or you could use, you could use the, the uh, glass beads like I've shown, and then when it moves off of that area, you could actually use a template, so. But these are, this is how you can easily and just quickly and cheaply make your any, any template you want. And uh, thanks for joining me on Short Tip, and I'll see you next time. 
Hey guys, if you're really digging these videos and would like some more information or to talk to other crafters, look at the link below in the description and uh, you can join my forum on the DMs Craft. We'd love to have you and I'll see you there.